The Steelers doing right by T.J. Watt. Four-year extension worth more than $112 million. $80 million guaranteed. And why wouldn't you? Because there are no guarantees in life, but T.J. Watt's pretty close. Letter of intent. Appreciate all the work you went into. Let's go get you a ring now. Come on. A couple of them. I can breathe, man. I can breathe. Sure. Like I said when I got drafted four years ago, it is my mission to make everybody in this room, everybody over here, and prove them right, that they made the right decision. That hunger has not gone away. It has gotten stronger. Uh, I, I'm so happy to be here in the city of Pittsburgh for many, many more years to come, and uh, a Super Bowl is definitely definitely a true possibility and I believe that in my heart of hearts and I'm going to do absolutely everything I possibly can to make that happen and to bring as many people along with me as I do that. Hey, you know what time it is. The city of champions. And he's going to get sacked. Let's go! Touchdown Steelers. The standard is the standard. Shotgun snap, empty set. Allen is hit, bounces out of the pocket, he's hit down from behind. Look at that, you got the chop to an uppercut. DJ Watt, what you say? It's DJ Watt that just did the slot. What a run by DJ Watt right up the backside of Josh Allen. And it happened right in front of Coach Mike Tomlin. Two days before the Steelers' Week 1 matchup with the Bills, T.J. Watt signed a new five-year contract and then proceeded to live up to his promise of giving it everything he had on the field. Down. That one is dumped by T.J. Watt. <laughs> and Watt's saying, don't take the flag, give me the sack. And T.J. Watt's like, hey, no, 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 don't take this. The 2021 season included the return of fans inside stadiums, and the ones in attendance at Heinz Field were feeding off of number 90. Big rush. T.J. Watt, the ball comes out. A fumble on the strip by Watt. Watt popped the ball loose from the grass of Derek Carr. Just as much as sacks and touchdowns are a part of the game, unfortunately, so are injuries. Tyson Alua-Lua, as you guys know, uh, has been placed on IR. Alex Highsmith with a groin, TJ Watt with a groin, so we're dealing with something there at, at that positional group. And obviously, we got Devin Bush and, and Joe Hayden who missed last week. Time heals all wounds. And while the Steelers haven't been at full strength at home, Watt's return to the defense timed up nicely with his own homecoming to the Badger State. Have you just put any thought into Green Bay knowing, you know, going back to Wisconsin to play a game? A little bit. I'm sure I'll hit like Culver's and stuff like that. I know <laughs> I've talked about that a lot on social media and stuff, but uh, yeah, I'll have a, a good crowd in the stands and that's always a special time whenever I get to be able to go home and especially Lambeau Field growing up, going to those games. <laughs> For the Watt brothers, the road to the NFL started in Pewaukee, Wisconsin, just two hours south of Green Bay. Hey, let's focus up, guys. Let's go. Have a great warm up. Let's go. Hit. One, two, three, four, five. Good. Nice. Good job. Good job. All right, here we go. Let's go six techs. Let's go six techs here. Six techs. So I was only uh, lucky enough to coach one of them, TJ, his senior year in high school, but uh, it's an extraordinary experience to have a kid on the team like TJ. And uh, talking to Mike Lecker, the defensive coordinator who coached all three of them, they were all kind of the same in terms of their competitiveness and their just desire to win and be the best they could be. Linebackers, keep your depth. Keep your depth. You can't make that mistake. It's fair to say that Pewaukee defensive coordinator Mike Lecker is familiar with the Watt family. He coached all three brothers, their uncles, and their father, John. How ultra competitive they all were. They always wanted to be the best in whatever sport, football of course, but in other sports like track and field, basketball, whatever. They didn't like losing, they still don't. No matter where the bar was, the next guy was trying to go over it. 
Uh, I, I think if you know they got together right now and it was chicken wings, they'd see how many they could eat, right? I mean, that's just what they do. They are competitors to the end. Each had different skill set. JJ, the oldest, was the tallest in high school. And at Wisconsin, he blossomed from there till now. Everybody knows the story. Derek, the middle one, outstanding, gifted high school football player. He was a running back here. We played a 3-3 stack defense. He was the middle backer. He made some plays that were unbelievable. TJ was the youngest one. And there was, in a sense, he may not have admitted it, but I know that he was under a lot of pressure. His senior year was the year that JJ really blew up and was having a great year, his first really big year in the NFL. And that's a lot to live up to and a big shadow to live under. You know, Derek was a phenomenal high school player. He was the AP player of the year in the state. Uh, and so I think, you know, really for TJ, he just wanted to be his own man and carve his own identity. And as a senior, he was asked to take over the quarterback position. He handled it beautifully. TJ was known to have good hands as a tight end throughout his high school career. But prior to the start of his senior year, Coach Frisky felt that a position switch would be best for the team. You know, his good hands weren't going to be very useful if we had no one to throw him the ball. And so from my perspective, I felt like if we didn't have a guy at quarterback that was going to be able to get him the ball where we could really use him, why not give it to him every play and see what he could do with it? He was the best player we had. You know, luckily for me, it proved to be a good move. In a perfect world, he would have stayed at tight end, but uh, moving him to quarterback was something I felt we needed to do for the team. And, you know, in talking to Wisconsin in particular, because they were pretty heavily recruiting at the time, uh, you know, they were fine with it. And they, they said, you know, we might be recruiting as a tight end, but we understand that at your level, you gotta do what you gotta do for your team. And certainly it was nothing, it was not gonna be any sort of a dark mark against TJ and his recruiting process. So uh, interestingly, you know, he was our holder and our punter and a whole lot of other things too. So one day we were out here before practice and coach Frisky runs a rugby punt and he asked TJ, did you ever rugby punt? No. Give it a try. Well, I threw him a ball, like, hey, just run to your right and kick it. So without any practice, he goes out there and rugby punts it 80 yards. 80 yard punt. And I looked at Coach Lecker, our defensive coordinator, and he looked at me and I said, okay, I think we found our punter. The sound of that ball hitting his foot is something I'll never forget. It was like a rocket going off. I'm going, you gotta be kidding me. It was really a great situation. We had a fantastic year, uh, won a conference championship, undefeated regular season, and I think a lot of that was just due to his presence. We were playing a team that we had never beaten at Pewaukee his senior year, and this was right after JJ made the play in the playoffs the previous year. We jumped up and picked off the pass and ran it for a touchdown. Um, TJ did exactly the same thing. Kid dropped back to pass. TJ was playing defensive end. He knew he wasn't going to get in to, to sack him. And so the kid threw an out route that TJ jumped up, caught it at full extension, took it back to the two yard line and we scored the next play. Uh, just a, a play that a typical kid can't make. Remarkable on the field, but even better off it. You know, just a great kid. I remember my, my first experience with him was when I was introduced as the new head coach and there was talk that he could be the best of the three. And you know, you're wondering what's this gonna be like? And he was the first kid to introduce himself to me when I got to the meeting. Kids from Pewaukee, kids from Wisconsin, they are who they are. Uh, and I think the best thing about the Watt kids is that they're, they're authentic. Great people who care a lot about the communities they live in, who care about a lot about their family, uh, and really love the game of football. John and Connie have done a great job of raising three wonderful kids. They sacrificed a lot for these guys. They've been there every step of the way with that. I have to give them credit too. Family has always been important to the Watts. In the off season, a lot of athletes travel to warm weather locations to train. The Watts, however, choose to come home and work out just a few miles from where they grew up. They're no strangers to hard work and their skills on the field, along with the work put in here, help them all reach the next level, which happened to be only 60 miles away. I think it first started with just conversations. You know, I had a lot of confidence that he'd be a really good tight end. 
but also, you know, believed he, he could be a really good outside linebacker and, and fit us. And, you know, I remember talking to JJ about it and said there's something about it. We had Derek at the time, he was on offense, and I said, this is kind of strange for me having two watts here and neither one's on defense. And so, you know, it was, that was kind of jokingly, but also you knew he was going to be a, a really good football player no matter what position he was at. And, and yet I think what kind of fit him for him and for our team uh, was the change. And But it, really all the credit goes to TJ. You know, he's the one that made himself into uh, being the great player that he is. And I think when he got to Madison, it was where we saw him really blossom. He blossomed to the outside linebacker. Look at now how he's developed. He's got that same fire the other two have. I always thought he was probably going to be a defensive player. When we lined him up at defensive end, it was remarkable how quickly he got off the ball. Uh, there was a suddenness to the way he moved that was unlike anything that I saw from any kid that year in the state. Yeah, he, he did uh, everything you'd want an individual to do. The way that he approached, you know, not just meetings, but practice and when he'd train, you know, things he did off the field uh, as he kept progressing, gaining confidence with that and, and the way that he approached each and every day and his work ethic and, and obviously has talent. Really all the, all the guys and what they're doing, you know, whether we're talking about TJ or Shobes, Derek, you don't know what's going to happen in the, in the future, but you're also not surprised when you do see him having success. Everyone has their own definition of success. For the Watt family, it comes in many forms. And for TJ, returning to the stadium he went to watch football at as a kid had to be one of the more surreal moments in his football career. He was there in 2016 as his Wisconsin Badgers took down LSU in the Lambeau College Classic. And in 2018, although he didn't play, when the Steelers and Packers met for a preseason game. Please, DJ, say hey, sorry, sorry, DJ, welcome back to Wisconsin, DJ. Row four right there next to the tunnels where I grew up watching games, always trying to get gloves and stuff, so it's good to be back. And now he has played an NFL regular season game in this historic venue. We are in Wisconsin, and getting TJ Watt back is a perfect homecoming for him. TJ is a difference maker, not only to the crowd and what he can do, but to opposing quarterbacks. They're drastically less efficient, and I think that's the edge that you need. Pittsburgh one for one on third down. Ben's gonna throw it down the right sideline. That pass is caught, touchdown! Deontay Johnson pulls it in. Yes! Yes! Woo! That's number 400 for Big Ben. Congratulations to Ben Roethlisberger, number 400. Just the eighth to ever join that ultra-exclusive club. Come on, D. Come on, Derek. Let's go, Derek Watt. Let's go. Come on, Derek. Come on. Taken at the one by Kylan Hill. Right side, 10, 15. Hurdles a man at the 20 and runs into stiff resistance, shy of the 25. You got him. Oh, no. You got him initially. He made the, the first hit. Which that was Derek Watt making him go high. Coming down there, going low, greet the obstacle that Kylan had to jump over. Here we go, Steelers, here we go. Here we go, Steelers, here we go. He wants to run, and he's dragged down from behind. T.J. Watt. Hands it off to Jones, and the ball came loose. And TJ falls on it, and the Steelers' defense comes up with a splash play. That's it, Trent, that's it. Najee gets the call up over the top. Did he make it? Touchdown! Najee Harris, his first rushing touchdown. He gets the fake bootleg left. Roger surveys, big heat. He's going to run. He's going to slide and take the slide at the 40-yard line. That pretty much does it for the Steelers. In Green Bay, the presence of the Watt parents and TJ's fiance were a sight to see. The final score, however, was not. The Steelers now prepare for a crucial two-game homestand before their bye week. TJ, Derek, and the rest of the team will be looking to get back on track, and there's no better place to get started than at home.
What's up Steelers Nation, it's TJ Watt. Welcome to the Pittsburgh Steelers official YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on everything going on in the Steel City. Thank you for being the best fans in football. Here we go.